As we stated before, precision shooting is all about consistency. So we want to find a way to get consistent behind the rifle. To do that, we need to talk about rifle fitment. I have here Tyler Hughes, incredible precision rifle competitor and the head instructor at the Max Ordnance Academy in California. He is an expert on this process of fitting the rifle to the shooter. In all of our classes, this is one of the first things that we talk about because it's the most overlooked adjustment when you're building a rifle to yourself. So as we start to talk about the process, we're looking at our length of pull. Does the rifle fit our body? And everything that it affects, it affects recoil, it affects how you manipulate and operate the weapon system, how you can function and reach the dials, reach the bolt, you know, keep your bone support. So all of this has an effect. It actually starts before you ever mount the scope to the rifle system itself. So we've got a couple different rifles here. We have traditional hunting style stock that, you know, like you can adjust the cheek piece on it. Uh, and then we have something here, which is a chassis gun. We've got this in a Magpul chassis. It has all these different adjustable parameters. Having that rifle fit to you is key. It's where you start. So that's gonna be the grassroots. Once you get that right, it's gonna help you do the things that you want to do at distance. So what we're gonna do at this point, we're gonna have Tyler walk us through actually on the rifle. All right, Sean, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to fit the length of pull to your body. Okay. We're all different. So you just pick that rifle up and you're going to place the buttstock in the bend of your elbow on your firing hand. Okay. And then place that trigger finger 90 degrees and let's see where we're at. So if you look at that knuckle and the trigger, we've got roughly half inch, three quarter inch that we need to adjust your length of pull. Okay. So we can set the rifle down, make some adjustments and then try it again. All right, so we made the adjustments. Okay. Now we're gonna check it again. That looks way better. Okay. We have that even knuckle with the trigger. Yep. And we look here, we've got meaty portion contact with your pistol grip, but again, we can also change that with the pistol grip being adjustable. Okay. So our length of pull is good right now. It's time to figure out how to place that buttstock in your collarbone. Okay. So now we're gonna fit your rifle into your shoulder. We're gonna make sure we have proper buttstock placement, right. proper body alignment. We're also gonna double check that we don't have the rifle set too low on the bipods, which can influence where a shooter places the buttstock. Okay. To make sure we have a good placement, we can see everything, I'm gonna ask you to take your jacket off. Okay. And what we wanna do is kinda of drive that buttstock vertically, right. center of that recoil pad. Okay. So now, with your firing hand, go ahead and place it on the pistol grip, like you have a good position there. So I'm gonna check your alignment, right? But before I do that, the way that you're going to adjust is by widening your elbows or bringing them closer together to change your elevation. Okay. So as a shooter, anytime I need to aim lower or aim higher, I'll be doing the adjustment with my elbows moving wider or closer instead of dropping the stock out of that perfect position. Gotcha. So go ahead and widen your elbows and I'll see if our bipods have a good placement. So if I look around here, what I'm feeling for is where is the top of the stock? And as you can feel right now, I've got a lot of stock placement on the top, but the bottom is very empty. Okay. So depending on how much recoil our rifle has, we might get a lot of muzzle hop right. because there's only a portion of the stock touching you. Okay. So I feel like this, the bipods are too low. Okay. So what I'll do here is I'll come out a few adjustments on our bipods. And I'm gonna ask you to reposition that stock. Bring it up, set it directly under the jawline there. It looks good. Now as I feel around, that's better. We have slight gap on the top, the bottom, and we have the center of pressure on that recoil pad right on that collarbone, right in that shoulder. So now you can widen your elbows and lower your position. That looks much better. Now one thing I noticed immediately as I came down on the elbows, when I got to this kind of level space, mm -hmm. my body stopped. Yes. Even though I wasn't necessarily, I didn't have a bag supporting it, it leveled out and stopped. It's that natural bone support that you're building. So if I look at your alignment, I'm going from muzzle to shoulder, down the shooting side of your body. Make sure your hips are in alignment for that even recoil. So if you could bring your hips slightly left for me, and it looks much better. Not only, 
are we looking at where the hips are placed in relation to the rifle, but we have a nasty habit of taking this elbow mm -hmm. and bringing it much farther forward, right. feeling like we have more control. Right, right. But all we did was move the angle of the shoulders away from that perpendicular position. So now I'm gonna take your optic here and I'm gonna make sure it's set on maximum power so that our eye relief can be set with the smallest amount of exit pupil. Okay. And without straining your neck forward or back, I want you to only move your head up and down. Tell me if you can see a clear picture all the way around. The hole is really small, a lot of shadow. Okay, so now I will reposition the optic. I'm trying to make sure I'm not craning my neck. I get a perfect view right there. So before I tighten these screws and then we go to tightening them, I'm gonna make sure I slide this optic forward so that the stopping portion of the ring mm -hmm. is touching the rear portion of the Picatinny rail okay. so that during recoil, we don't have shifting. Gotcha. So the last portion of this is to make sure now that we have our length of pull, we have our buttstock placement, we have our scope mounted, is to adjust that cheek piece so you can consistently and naturally place your head in the same position every single time. Okay. Okay. So that's the position that we want your head. Okay. So now we have to use that cheek piece to elevate your head and gotcha. move it into the alignment of the optic. Okay. And you don't want to have to force it, Sean. You just want your head to naturally rest in the same position every time. Okay, so I'm resting. Okay. I got perfect view of the optic. It's crisp edge to edge. Great. Now the last test that I'll ask you to do is to close your eyes. Okay. I just want you to relax. I want you to breathe. And after you've taken a couple breaths and you've relaxed, I want you to open your eyes and make sure that we do have that cheek piece set in the right spot and that it's giving you that consistent support on that cheekbone that you need. Okay, so I have shadow. Where is the shadow located? It's, it's on the side, so it's on the left side. Okay. So typically when we see shadowing, if it's all the way around, it would be an eye relief issue. Okay. If it's on one side or the other, right, then your head is too far in that direction. Okay. So if we have shadowing on the left, then our head is too far left. Okay. So we still need to make adjustments with that cheek piece. Try bringing that cheek piece up one more adjustment. It's coming up. And we'll run through that process again. Now, close your eyes. Relax your head. Let your head fall on that cheek piece. And then open and see what you have. Now this, this actually feels pretty good here. Okay. Yep. We have our rifle set up and now we're just fine tuning how we want that cheek piece, all right? Okay. But there's a calculation you can do. You can take the objective size. Okay. And you can divide it by your magnification setting. Okay. And that will tell you the size of your eye relief or your exit pupil in millimeters. All right. So let's say we had a 60 millimeter objective. Mm -hmm. We're on 30 power. Mm -hmm. 60 divided by 30 is two. So that beam of light would be two millimeters size. Gotcha. So you can see on that magnification setting how small that beam of light is and gotcha. how perfect your position has to be. So. Tyler so far has, has gotten us through the length of pull, cheek height, and the placement of the optic. So okay, Tyler, now we wanna start shooting. Walk me through this process of what we need to pay attention to. Absolutely, so after every shot that we take, Sean, what we're trying to do is observe where does the recoil settle. Okay. So the rifle wants to be in line with your body and the path of least resistance, yeah. right? Yep. So if you see that reticle jump or the whole rifle move or hop or bounce, then you're allowing that recoil to control you. Okay. So what we're looking for is that one mil bubble. Now, the more experience you get or more high power rifles we're dealing with, we can expand or contract that bubble, but we got to start somewhere. So for a 6.5 Creedmoor, one mil circle around your aiming point is a good place to start. Okay. And managing that recoil, your grip, right? 90 degree trigger press, 
breathing, all of these things come into play as we're trying to be consistent, manage recoil, and focus on where is the crosshair going after we fire. How does your field of view look? Everything looks great. All right. Side to side, it's crisp. Everything looks good. All right, I think we're ready to shoot. Okay. Make sure to check where that crosshair is at when the rifle settles before you rush back to the target. Okay. What are you seeing? I am off the target, high and right, about three mils. So any vertical movement is gonna have to do with how much control do we have in the rear. Okay. We're using a rear bag. Uh -huh. Did that rear bag collapse? Okay. Did we drop our hand? Did we lose tension? But something allowed that reticle to rise. Now the reticle moving to the right is gonna be dealing with this. Okay. Right? Right. Your body alignment looks great. Okay. But I feel like this shoulder is slightly too far forward, forward. Okay. which could be connected to your hips. So go ahead and move your hips slightly to the left, maybe a half inch, inch or so. Okay. So that last shot was totally within the bubble. Lot, so much less movement. But can I be honest and tell you, I don't. I feel very awkward right now. A lot of people will feel awkward because it's not a position they're used to being in. Their bodies are normally off to their non-firing side. Right. Their head's closer to the scope. Right. If you understand the why, why should I be behind the rifle? Recoil management. Why am I looking for where that reticle moves? Right. Consistency. Right. If you start to understand the why, then you can put yourself in this position and get used to it. Just practice repetitions, constantly getting into that good position. And this should be part of every shooter's dry fire routine. By now you should understand that rifle fitment is paramount to successful shooting. And I can tell you, doing the things that Tyler instructed me to do and sticking to those really made a huge impact down range. And I'll be honest, sometimes you don't know but I can tell you 100% it did uh, exactly what he said it would do. So Tyler Hughes, I wanna thank you for coming. Lead instructor, Max Ordnance Academy in California. Great place to go and learn. Thank you for your time, sir. Hey, Sean, it was great being out here today. Thank you. Appreciate it.